be sixth, seventh, and eighth graders here. So if you're in fourth grade or ninth grade, yeah, we got to find a different spot for you guys. But um, welcome. We're so excited for you guys to be here. Um, my name is Chris, and I am the leader for seventh and eighth grade boys. We are in a series called Moods. And in this series, we're talking about all kinds of feelings, emotions, and moods that we experience. We want to dive right into what we're looking at and how we feel as, as students, right? And so um, if you're new here today, if this is your first time, we're super excited that you're here. Welcome. I know it could be a little frightening going into a new youth group, but know that uh, here at Faith Students, that you're welcome, that uh, you're loved, and, uh, and if you're the one who invited somebody, thank you very much. So before we get started, I need two volunteers. Uh, I need a brave girl, right? We're going to talk about fear today, and probably brave would be the opposite of fear, right? And so um, do I have a brave girl? Girls, who's brave? Who feels brave today? Come on. No girls? No brave girls? Oh, sorry, Erica, come on up here. I am so sorry, Erica. I'm feeling like this is the girl section, right? But it's not. And so come on, Erica. And then a brave boy. Do we have a brave boy? Jake, you want to? Jake? Come on, Jake. Come on up here. All right. So here's, here, I, I have something, Erica. I have something. I want you to stick your hand in what I have in this mysterious box right here, all right? Now, I can't tell you what it is, but as soon as you put your hand in it, you're going to know, or you might know, or you, I want you to guess to see if you can tell me what it is. Are you ready, Erica? All right, without looking, I just need you to stick your hand in there and um, just like this and then and pull one out. So, um, yeah, come on. Are you ready? All right, without looking, so kind of look that way, and then just stick your hand in there. Go deeper, deeper. Hold on. No, 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 just grab it. It's going to be okay. No, 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 looking. Come on, don't. It's going to be okay, Erica. I promise you, it won't bite you. What is it? It's worms. All right, so it's just like, are you okay? Is your hand dirty? Yeah. Okay, you, you can go grab some napkins if you don't. I should have brought some before I got some. But thank you, Erica, right? Okay, so, and Jake, here's, I have a mysterious drink in here. All right, I can't tell you what it is, but you have something now. Well, it's a little bit more cooler than hot chocolate. Are you ready? I can't tell you what it is, so you've got to be able to take a sip of it. Is it gross? I mean, you won't get sick from it. No, 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 we're not going to poison Jake. Go ahead, Jake. What does it taste like? <laughs> what does it taste like? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. Okay, so, um, so what, Erica? You don't like it? I promise you, you've had this before. Do you know what? It, so Erica was trying to get some, some um, gummy, gummy worms out of this. Um, it's pudding in here, right? So it's pudding. And then Jake had a little sip of, uh, of breakfast eggs before they were cooked. And so, <laughs> so guys, hey, th here's, thank you for being brave. That's, that's, that's what I really wanted to do. All right? So, um, yeah, I mean, you guys might be too old for this, but I can remember, like, guys, if they were trying to uh, lift weights and they were trying to put some weight on, like, they would drink raw eggs. And so... Uh, now we have protein shakes, so we don't even need that anymore, right? So, all right. So I got all that out of the way. I got the games out of the way. So this week we're talking about fear, right? And so I had Erica and I had Jake. Um, I'm sure fear could have stopped them from volunteering. I'm sure that they could have been like, no, not me. I, I don't want to do that. But they, allowed, they didn't allow that fear to be the boss of them. And so this week, we're going to be talking about um, fear. Now, fear, the definition of fear is an unpleasant emotion caused by anticipation 
of awareness and danger. Now, you could have been like, Chris, what, what, what was the, the danger of them coming up here? But it was the emotion and being in front of other people. It was the, it was the awareness that, hey, I didn't want anyone to really kind of laugh at me. Or I didn't want anybody to, to, I don't know, whatever. Whatever you want to fill that blank into, right? So fear, what fear wants to do, it wants to creep in and kind of tell you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. And so this week we really want to focus on not allowing fear to be the boss of us, okay? So now I, I know you may think, well, Chris, you can't be scared of anything, but I really am scared of something, right? And I want to show you what I'm scared of. Um, I put it on the screen, and let's see if it's going to pop up. It's not different color. Well, you know what? It's not that guy, right? He looks scary, but that's not what I'm really scared about. I'm really scared about this guy. Now, this guy, if you don't know what he is, he's a rooster. Now, growing up as a kid, um, my father... He used to fight roosters, right? And so they would do that far off. But this was like, I was like five, six years old. And, and we, we used to have like chickens, pigs, and all kinds of things growing up when I was little. But he would, these, this guy really, really scared me because he has that beak. And then you see that little red thing he has on his head. That's really scary. And he's just scary to me. All right, and so I can remember one time this, this rooster was kind of like malnourished, he, and so they wanted me to take care of him. And you know the funniest thing? I was like, man, this guy's going to start poking me. He's going to start pecking me with his little beak, and I'm going to go crazy. All right, and so it was, it was this guy that kept me up at night, and I didn't really want him to poke my eyes out. And so I don't know what you're scared of. I don't know what kind of makes you kind of cringe. I don't know what it is that, you know what I mean, that you may be hiding in your room that needs a nightlight. Um, but we all have those things. We all have those things that make us fearful, right, that we're scared of. Now, a rooster is, that's a phobia. I actually looked it up, and it's this phobia. I can't even pronounce it. It's got like 12 letters in it. But... In all seriousness, we all have kind of things that we really, really do fear, right? Like maybe our parents not getting along, right, and, and then fighting. We have the fear of our friend, our really good friend, who no longer is our friend, and we're scared that, man, that's the only friend I had. And we could be scared, we could be fearful of public speaking. I mean, if I can be honest with you, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little fearful, right? I'm a little fearful of being able to come up here and, and speak in front of you. And so those are those fears that kind of want to take over. They want to take control of us, right? And so if, if I allow it to, and if I let it, it could be my boss. It could tell me, hey, you do this and only this. Or you can't do that. Don't do that. And so it's, it's maybe reaching out to somebody who's new in your class and just saying, hey, how, how's it going? My name is so-and-so. And, you know, if you, if you, you can sit with us at lunchroom, uh, we have lunch. Or if it's maybe talking with a friend about what's going on at home, right? Those are the things that we need to be able to share with one another. Because if, if we're ever going to be what God has called us to be, we've got to have one another. We've got to be able to share our feelings. We've got to be able to share those fears that we have, okay? So regardless of what you're scared of, we all have something in common. We all experience fear in our lives. We're all fearful. We all, we're all that at some times in our life that we're fearful. Now, as we get older... Those fears just change, but we all have those in common, right? So if, if anything, what you could do is talk about, you mean, your, your uncomfortability, what, what you're scared about with other people. And so maybe that, should, that can help you 
be a friend. You know, something I've always told my children is, if you want a friend, be a friend. Because that's the only way you're going to get a friend, right? Because you can act cool, you can act like you're all that. But in all honesty, I mean, really? Are you? You know what I mean? And, I don't, and then it's just like it's not even about that because we all have this in common. We all are fearful. We all have this in common. And so, um, so yeah, so no matter how you manage fear, it's, what's interesting is that our imagination seems to play a big part in experiencing this fear, right? So the stuff that we're, we, we're usually afraid of is the stuff that we can imagine might happen to us. So our imagination takes us to a place that may not even happen, right? Those what ifs in life, like, well, what if, and you just fill in that blank. And so, and, and if we let it, fear can take our minds and motives and thoughts. It leads our imaginations down a path of endless what ifs. So some of the what ifs that, I, that I've written down is never have friends I want. What if my parents get divorced? What if I never get taller? What if my sister doesn't get any better? Right? These, these are some of those serious kind of what ifs. Like what if you What if my boyfriend or girlfriend breaks up with me? What if God actually isn't real? What if I fail my class? What if I have to move? Or what if I get in trouble? What if I don't make the team? What if I, I never feel any different than the way I feel right now? And what if, and we'll just end with that one, right? What if, and that's, that's probably the best one. What if I never feel any different than I feel right now, right? And no matter, and I, and I don't know what, what it is that you're going through. I don't know what you're facing, but I want to let you know that you're not the only one who faces that. Like, we're here and we face the exact same thing. We live in the same neighborhoods. We go to the same church. We go to the same school. So you know we all kind of face the same things. And so that's why we're here for one another. That's why, I mean, the Bible calls us the body of Christ. And if we are the body of Christ, then we all work together for one common purpose, right? And so the golden rule is treat, your, treat others the way you want to be treated, all right? So my hand can, can't tell my foot, well, I don't really don't need you. You, could, you can't do what I do. But the funny thing is they all work together. We all work together. My hand can't walk like the way my foot can, or my foot doesn't do the way, it can't grab the way of my hand. So you see, we're all different, but we're all for the common good. We all do the exact same function, right? And so we are called to be the body of Christ. Now, when you're faced, when we face our fears, most of us have one of these three responses, okay? So when you face fear, whenever you face fear, you usually have one of these three responses. The first one is we fight, okay? I don't, I don't know if you guys know who this is. Can anyone tell me who this is? Anybody? This is Manny Pacquiao. He is, uh, he's been a world champion for boxing. And he is, I think he's the governor of uh, the Philippines. A really, really good, really good fighter, really good boxer. Now, when we fight, like I said, we have three responses to our fear. We fight when we face the fear that, that most of us fight against. We act on it. We try to control the things that we can control it to keep things we fear from actually happening. Maybe you yell at your dad to take care of himself when you're afraid that he'll get sick. Or maybe you, you force your siblings to avoid the party because you're worried about what might happen if she goes. Or you study uh, way more than you really need to for the test because you're afraid that you might fail it. You focus on what you can control. You fight back against the fear by taking control of it. And when you don't, and you don't give up until you feel like you fixed it or stop it or done what you can to keep what that fear is coming true. All right? So many of us fight that fear. Many of us try to take control of what we're scared of. All right? And then the second response, 
The first one was fight. The second one is flight. Then basically is you just run from it. You don't even deal with it. It's it, um, fear makes you uh, it motivates you not to fight back, but you run from but you run in the opposite direction. You avoid asking questions. That's like, that's that's you avoid it, right? Instead of actually trying to face what it is that you're feeling, you avoid it. And the thing with avoiding it and running with it, it's almost like it's always there. Like it never goes yet. You'll continue to run from it. You'll always run from the fear. And so um, you stay away from it, from your friends, um, when they've hurt you or your feelings because you don't want to face that fear that they might reject you. Uh, you're afraid that you won't get the lead in the play so you don't try out for it. You fear Fear because it sends you running away from avoiding the things that you're worried about or afraid of altogether. And so um, that's another thing that we do. We either fight, we flight, we run from it, or number three is we freeze from it, okay? And so some of us, fear simply makes us freeze right in our tracks. It paralyzes us. We get stuck when we're faced with the fear that something bad will happen or we're disappointed or the things that won't turn out the way you've hoped. You get, you get past it. You can't get past it. You, do, you can't do anything but hide out. You pull the covers over your head and you stay there until the fear hopefully passes. All right? And so that's one of the things that we do. We, we freeze. We don't do anything. We just hopefully and pray that it just... Go, magically goes away. And so here's the thing. Fear is natural. Fear is something that we're always going to face. Fear is something that's never really going to go away. We're all experiencing it no matter what our ages are. And I'm here to tell you that we should never, ever be afraid of something to the point that it's going to not allow us to pursue our dreams and our hopes. Because honestly, there is a lot of stuff to be afraid of. And fear can be helpful sometimes because it helps us avoid and be cautious around things that really could hurt us. The issue is when fear takes over, when it becomes a boss of your actions, thoughts, and life. And when we need to figure out a new, and we need to figure out a new way to face it. Okay? So the Bible gives us a couple of examples. The Bible actually tells us about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who um, one day in the Bible tells us in Matthew that he got into the boat with his disciples and suddenly a furious storm came up to the lake so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping and his disciples went and woke him up and saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. And so these disciples had gotten to this boat with Jesus and these waves started crashing over, all over, and they were scared, right? They were afraid. So his disciples were traveling in the boat, and then suddenly a storm came, and, and then they woke him up, right? And they said, to, and he replied, and then they said, so they said, Lord, save us. We're going to drown. And then Jesus wakes up, and he says, you of little faith, why are you afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. Then the men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this, that even the winds and the waves obey him? Now, on a really quick side note, Jesus was fully man and fully God, right? He wasn't half man or he wasn't half God. He was fully man and fully God. Jesus was fully man that he became thirsty and he wanted water. And Jesus was fully God that he could tell you the, that he can say to the waves, be calm. Now, I don't know if you can really imagine that or really grasp that, but Jesus told the waves to be calm. The Bible tells us he told the sea, hey, this far and no more. Have you guys ever been to the ocean? The ocean comes, or even to the beach, it comes, it stops, and it goes back. 
Jesus, God, set those limitations on water. He's the one who did that. That's pretty amazing. I don't know about you, but I wish I could do that, but I can't. All right? I can't even... I can't even imagine that. But that's the kind of God we serve. That's the kind of Jesus that is, wants to help us, right? So Jesus here is telling them, hey, you a little faith. I've been with you all this time. Don't you not realize? So when Jesus did this, when Jesus did this, exactly what he was capable of doing, he calmed the storm. He took the very thing that his disciples were afraid of and stopped it in his tracks. He eased their fears, not just by stopping the waves and, and the sea, but by providing that there is something else that we could choose in face of fear, and it's faith. So we can either fight, flight, or freeze, right? But there's another option, and that other option is faith. Like, where's your faith at? What do you put your trust in? Who are you relying on, right? Because when that fear comes at you and you're afraid, you know, where is that reassurance that everything is going to be okay? All right? And then Jesus gives us this other verse in 1 Peter chapter 5 uh, with verse 7. And Jesus says, cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. So this is Peter telling us, Jesus, Peter was one of Jesus' disciples, and he's telling us, hey, cast all your anxieties on Jesus because he cares for you. This is the Jesus that your parents teach you. This is the Jesus that we're talking about here at Faith Students. He isn't just some Jesus on the cross who still stays there, maybe on your necklace or on your wall. But this is the real Jesus who says, hey, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. And He's the only one that can actually do something about it. He's the one that we put our faith in. So when we take Jesus at who he really is and, who, and what he tells us to do, he, he almost takes that fear and he calms it. Right? That fear can almost paralyze us and over consume us. But Jesus says, hey, I want those fears. I want to be able to show you a better way. I don't want you to fight because the battle's mine. I don't want you to run because I'm with you. And I don't want you to freeze because I really do care about you. So this is the Jesus we're talking about. The Jesus that wants to be alive in our lives, right? And so sometimes we allow the worries of life to drown him out, right? So some of those worries about is about being cool at school, right? Some of those drowns, some of those worries and those fears can, we want to be really liked. We want to have the best of things. We want to allow things to over and drown out what Jesus is trying to tell us. So fear doesn't have to be your boss, all right? And like his disciples, Jesus offers an alternative to fear, and he offers us faith. So to, what do we do then with our fears? The next time you're faced with something to be scared of, what can we do? Well, like in 1 Peter says, we can cast all our cares upon Jesus. All right? And so Jesus knowing, Jesus being on that boat, realized that, hey, all Jesus wanted to do is for us to rely on him more. Okay, and so we can pray, we can talk to him about our fears, we can invite him into them, we can focus on the things that we know are true about Jesus, and we can let our faith and his ability to handle our fears overcome them. So this week, what I want realists to really do is to think about what fears we're facing right now, what fears that we're facing, okay? And write them down and say them aloud and put some words to what you're feeling, what you're really afraid of. What, what, what is it that's making you scared? Put some words behind that. Because you have to address that fear if you're ever going to fight it. It's like, it's like a bully, right? If you allow a bully to bully you once, he's going to continue to bully you again. But if you stand up to that bully, he knows that, hey, man, 
this guy's not really going to let me push him around no more, so I might have to find somebody else. But it's just standing up to that fear and allowing Jesus to help you with that. And then, one by one, take our fears to Jesus. I mean, throw them over to him and ask him to help you have the faith that he's in control. Pray that he'll be with you in the middle of your storm and give your fears to him and walk with him through it. And remember, fear doesn't have to be your boss. Fear doesn't have to be your boss where it controls you, where it stops you from, be, from being who you are, right? Some of you are natural born leaders. And but what stops us from leading is that fear of rejection. Some of us are natural born gifted in talents. And, and maybe like if you guys play an instrument and we're looking for, for uh, musicians to help Josie in our thing, you guys are, God's giving you a God-given talent to do those things. And he wants, you, he wants you to use that for his honor, for his glory. Don't allow fear to stop you from I mean, honoring God. All right? And then fear stops us because we, we feel like we're helpless, but we're not. The, number, the best thing that we could ever do is pray. The best thing that we could ever do is pray. And ask God to help us in every situation. Just like 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast all your anxieties on Jesus. For he cares about you. He cares about what you're going through. He cares about that so much. Right? That he came and lived an example of the perfect life. That you could follow him for the rest of your life. And what better way. Of living that life for that, okay? And so, so think about your fears, write them down, and then give them up to Jesus, and then just pray. Ask God to help you through those fears. So as we break into our small groups, I want us to really talk about those things, things about that that make us fear, right? And I really encourage you to be honest with with those fears. And I know it can be a little intimidating. I know it can be a little bit of, well, I don't know. You know, what, what are my friends going to think about me? What are these people going to, these uh, other people going to think about me? But then that tells us that we're okay with it. That we're okay where we're at. But are you really? Are you really okay with where you're at? And so... I really encourage you to, just to be honest, to be honest with your leaders, be honest with your group, and allow, allow us to help you, allow other people to help you. And you might just notice that you're not the only one who feels that way, that there's other people who feel the exact same way and who are going through the exact same thing. And so I want to stop and pray and ask God to help us. But I really want you to really press in, right? What you put in is what you're going to get out of this small group time. What you put in. If you don't put in anything, guess what you'll get? You'll get nothing. You won't get anything. But if you put something in, you're going to get out what you put in. So I really encourage you to do that. I encourage us to, man, to be the body of Christ, right? I, I have some really high expectations for you young people. Because you guys are coming upon a world that wants to say no to Jesus. And, and quite honestly, they're not hiding anything about it. They're blatantly, publicly, and in your face saying I don't want anything to do with Jesus. I want to do it my way and the way I want to do it. But you, you young people, have the opportunity to stand up for Jesus. And if Jesus can calm the sea and just say, hey, calm down, sea. Imagine what he can do in your life. Imagine what he can do in your school. Imagine what he can do in your home. Imagine what he can do in the your circle of friends. 
don't put a box and don't limit a Jesus where there is no limitations to him. He's capable of doing more. He's capable of doing beyond what you think he could do. He's capable of that. That's the Jesus we serve. All right? So let us pray, and then we'll break into our small groups. Father, I, I want to say thank you. I thank you for this opportunity to share your word. Thank you for this opportunity to share um, our fears. Father, that thing that, that we really kind of just want to hang on to and not let anybody, not let anybody in. But God, I just pray that we would be open with what it is that we're fearful of. Again, I pray that we would be honest. God, and I pray that as we break into our small groups, that we would allow other people to come in. And we would realize that we're not the only ones facing that. And we would realize that you want to be there and help us. And so, Father, I thank you for that. And I pray for every one of these young students. God, I just pray that you would be so real in their lives. That they would be able to see you in their circumstance. That they'd be able to see you in their schools, in their life, in their homes. Father God, and let them know that you love them and that you truly do care. And that we could cast our cares upon you for you care for us. So Father, I thank you. Bless these young, children, these young students. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So I'm going to release you guys to go to your small groups. Thanks, guys.